Um, I'm Lance Wilson. I'm the chamber president this year. Typically, we have our committee chairman over the new networking lunch uh, introduce uh, all of us and welcome everyone here. But Matt is unable to attend today due to family uh, uh, issues. So I get to stand and uh, welcome you all to our new networking luncheon. Um, we would like to, first of all, once again, thank Madera's, who is catering our lunch today. Um, it's great that we have such wonderful restaurants and businesses that can provide uh, a wonderful lunch meal for us. So thank you, Madera's. Um, all right. Now that he just sat down, we're going to go ahead and congratulate Carrie Robarts. Carrie, do you want to stand and take a bow? <laughs> yes. Yesterday... Yesterday, we, uh, we, we celebrated our March Business of the Month, which is Robarge Collision. So we just wanted to uh, recognize Robarge and Carrie for all the work they do and, uh, and the wonderful recognition of being our Business of the Month. Thank you, Carrie. So we had a great celebration and cake for all, and uh, it was a fun time. Um, we want to also, we have this nice display here. Camille, do you want to quickly just stand, or do you want me to uh, go over this? This... Uh, you could do much better justice for this than I will. So, Camille Bone is with South Utah Valley Animal Shelter, and I'm going to let her. You don't have to hold the mic. Well, actually, yeah, you better. Thanks. Yeah, like he said, I'm with the animal shelter. Um, we're down 582 West, 3000 North, behind the county jail. Um, I was just asked to bring a display of kind of what we offer. Um, we do the rabies clinics from town to town. We just did the one here in Spanish Fork. Um, we're trying to get a big cat room in. Um, we'd like to make it feel very homely down there. So we just like a free roaming cat room. Um, we do microchipping. Um, and like I said, we're over all the licensing for Utah County. Um, we do adoptions. Um, if you have a lost pet, definitely check with us. Um, or if you have found a pet, check with us. We have scanners to search for the microchips for their owners, things like that. So thanks for letting me be here. Thanks, Camille. And if we can just adopt all the cats, then we might not need the cat room, right? <laughs> they're coming to my house. I am a professional cat herder, so yes, they'll come to my farm. So, <laughs> yeah, a lot of cat food, but no mice. Uh, all right, Clark, what else do we have to announce before we... Uh... Oh, Brady, that's right. Brady's going to... Brady, before you uh, eat your food and before you run off and get married in nine days, eight days, yeah. uh, do you want to stand and uh, talk to us a little bit about Play Unplugged? Yeah, I'm already standing, so I'll just do that. Um, <laughs> so our, uh, for those of you that don't know, we are, uh, the Chamber has been putting on this program called uh, Play Unplugged for the last couple of years. It is to help kids get out of their house and play outside, to play unplugged, right? And so the time to sign up for this um, is, is, this is this month, yeah. And so like, this year we've decided to do a limited, num uh, limited amount of slots. And so, and things are filling up. So if you have not, if you're dragging your feet to say like, you know, um, to, uh, to sign up for this thing, now's the time to do it because once the slots are gone, like they're gone. Um, so uh, they, they have to sign up by the end of this month. Uh, your challenge. Yeah, you choose your challenge, the activity that you want the kids to do, and then um, you'll have little brag tags you can give out to the kids when they, when they do your little activity. Um, we also, instead of, uh, for those of you that have done it in the past, we have done a, a, a summer party, um, kind of a wrap-up party. This year we're going to do a kickoff party. So those of you that don't have a, a business or that don't necessarily want foot traffic in your business because you have, like, you don't want kids, like, playing with your oil spigots or something like that, Todd. Um, you, can, you, can get a, um, you can have a spot at the kickoff party to hand out your tags so you can still get, uh, get your name out that way. Um, then we're also doing a promotion with the schools. So this is like a good thing for local schools. The, wi um, the school that has like the, the best record for the kids that have all their tags um, will get $1,000, I believe. And then, uh, no, 500? 500. 500. A thousand? Okay. Five hundred thousand um, dollars. You heard it here. Yeah. Uh, and then there will be one winner in, uh, in every school that gets a bike as well. So it's, uh, we're really trying to, to get the kids excited about this and to, uh, you know, to have them play unplugged. And um, yes, question. Can Springville, Can Springville schools participate? Is, are they part of Spanish Fork? They then no. So <laughs> no. Hold me back. Brady. 
Just kidding. You can be a little more. <laughs> the kids can. The kids can, but uh, obviously the, the, the prizes for the schools will be just in the Spanish Fork Salem area. Uh, but obviously, kids that are participating in other communities, we're not going to turn them away. Uh, as they come through the doors of your business and they've you know, accomplished the challenge that you've sponsored, they can certainly get a tag. And uh, if they don't have a lanyard, I'm, I'm assuming they would come to us to get that to the chamber office. So. And the kickoff is June 18th right. at the, at the oh. If you have more questions about Play Unplugged, contact Brady, contact the chamber office, ask any of us, and we'd be happy to help explain more about the details of Play Unplugged. And just thank you to everybody who voted because uh, a lot of the play last year for the grant of yeah. State Farm, uh, we're using their money mm -hmm. and we're using it well. Uh, the lanyard that Lance is holding, uh, we purchased that on our own. Through brand makers. Through brand makers. Thank you, Daryl. Yes. He just told me you got it for almost, what is that, 45% yeah. less? Yep. This yeah. This is this is this is where we put our, our money where our mouth is. When we have a local business that's a member of our chamber actually making this and doing these kinds of things, giving them business and saving us money compared to what we would have paid otherwise. And, and we do realize plug <coughs> themselves, they are a business. Yep. And we recognize that, we honor that. And buying the brag tags, they are making a profit. But so are we. And we're giving uh, money to so brand makers. Anything out of yeah. their mouths yep. by ordering so. uh, our own lanyard. Yep. Yep. And I think all of the sponsors are, it'll actually be that lanyard. So. Yeah. Um, so. So, yeah, and I just have to uh, say thanks to uh, Daryl for that. And obviously, I have to say thanks to my own company, State Farm, who uh, was so generous in putting out the grant opportunity. And we obviously won that grant, so we have the funds to fund Play and Plug this year. So, okay, thanks, Brady. You're welcome, Lance. Good, good luck in eight days. <laughs> and then the other thing I'll mention before we turn the time over to Sean is the Easter egg hunt. So the Chamber of Commerce sponsors our annual city Easter egg hunt here in Spanish Fork, and that is a week from Saturday. Right, Heather? <laughs> You're going to be there. So, yeah. Um, on Friday evening at 6 o'clock at the High Chaparral, the fairgrounds, we're going to be stuffing eggs and kind of doing any last-minute prep. If you... Every year that's kind of a fun event for a lot of businesses to come down and help with that. And then Saturday morning at 7.30, we're going to be staging everything at, the, f at the, uh, the ballpark, at the sports park, and setting out the eggs and doing all of that. It's a good opportunity if you want to have fun with your kids, bring them down, participate in the Easter egg hunt. You can help set up. Um, we'd love to have you. So, so that's Friday the 25th? Friday the 25th, and then Saturday morning the 26th. And we'll be building oh. 300 mm -hmm. Easter baskets and filling those as well as finishing off the eggs and um, and as a chamber we 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 finance the Easter egg hunt so any donations we get from businesses to help pay for eggs or the candy or the bikes any donation you want to give as a business we obviously try and give you as much recognition for that as well it's a good it's a good activity to sponsor so that's what time on Friday night. six o'clock six o'clock Friday night at the High Chaparral and then the Easter egg hunt is obviously at 9 a.m. Saturday morning but we're going to be meeting at 7.30 to start staging and getting everything set up at the sports park. So and there will be a shuttle that will be going to Mapleton to Brady's reception. And <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, without further ado, our, our guest speaker today is Sean Beecher from Spanish Fork City and he is going to be presenting to us on a new mapping tool that the city has and I'm not going to take any more time and turn the time over to Sean. Okay. I don't know, does SFCN uh, 17 want me to do this again because I've done it once before. Do you want me to keep the mic? All right, they want me to keep the mic. It's going to be kind of awkward so hopefully those over there uh, can hear me because I have to be over here at the computer. Uh, the reason why I'm here kind of came about because at a city council meeting I did a presentation similar to this and they said well why don't you present this to uh, real estate agents, developers, uh, bankers, those kind of people that might use this. So I guess let me ask a question, what kind of groups do we have in here? I mean I would imagine we have the gamut, right? All sorts of businesses. So some, this may work for some of you, it may not work for some of you. Hopefully uh, it will help 
you in some way, shape, or form. But what we're gonna go over today, and can you guys hear me over there? Yeah. Okay, <clears throat> I'll try and speak loud so you can still hear me. If you go to our Spanish Fork webpage, right there in the middle is a link that says mapping. <clears throat> And on this mapping page, we're only gonna go over a couple of these. Uh, one that you might be very interested in is our construction map. The construction map, because if we're gonna be doing construction or there's gonna be construction in your area that might affect your business, you might wanna know about that and what's gonna go on. So we've put out this construction map that we're gonna update probably once every two weeks that's gonna highlight areas where we're gonna be doing construction. In this case, uh, in the summer of, from s the spring of this year to summer of this year, UDOT's gonna be overlaying and redoing all of Main Street. So, it's kind of gonna imp impact a lot of businesses. And so what we've done is we put out as much information as we have at the moment. We'll keep updating this every two weeks. And if you wanna know exactly what's going on, you can actually click on the attachments down below and see more specific information about that particular project. So we just wanted to highlight that and, and let you know about it, that it is out there. You can click on any construction project and find out what's going on in your area. <coughs> For other real estate agents, those kind of uh, businesses, there's this government services. So if you're trying to highlight areas for a particular resident or someone you're trying to help, uh, I won't zoom in, but you can zoom in and, and click on a particular property. I'm just going to click kind of in the area. And it's going to do a, a query and find out all of the government services. When is my trash pickup? When is recycling pickup? What schools am I part of? In this case, uh, they're part of the Park Elementary School, and I can actually click on the website for that particular school and get more information about that school. So if you're wanting to highlight particular boundaries, you can do that. What monuments are in the area? And I can click on each one and find out where they are. Trash dro drop-off facilities, museums, community centers, post offices, libraries, po police stations, fire stations. So it has a wealth of information of what government services are available to those residents. At any time, you can click down here in the bottom and see that particular boundary. In, case, in this case, I clicked on the high school boundary so I could see what high school boundary is for that particular area. Or if you wanna click on a museum, come over here and click on it and it will show you where it is. So we kinda wanted to highlight that for your business. The last one we wanted to get into, so all of these, these maps right here, all of them but this full interactive map, you can consider them more like racehorses. They're meant to be very focused very streamlined and faster in the way they work. And they're also meant to work with mobile devices. So you can use it on your phone, you can use it on an iPad, on a Droid tablet, whatever it may be. The last one, the full interactive map, is more like a pack horse. It has a one-stop shop for everything. It has tons and tons and tons of information in it. As you can see over here, there's a list of layers. If you were to start expanding these, in this map there's about 80 something layers in here of information. As soon as you turn it on, you can actually start identifying information about that particular layer. Before we get into the layers though, I wanna show you a couple of uh, features that the mapping itself has. So I'm just gonna zoom in on a particular area. Over here you have the Google Street View. If you have your pop-up blocker turned off, in this case, it has a pop-up blocker on. So I'm gonna um, allow pop-ups for this particular website. <laughs> and as soon as I do that, I can drag my little guy onto this street and you'll notice that it has a street view of that street. You'll also notice that over here in, in this area, there's like a view shed of where he's looking. When you first drag this man onto the street, that view shed may be wrong, but as soon as you start dragging that, it will correspond with where you're looking at. So if you have a question about a particular property you're looking at, you don't have to actually drive out to that property to see what's going on in that property. You can actually pull it up and look at that property. 
using this mapping. The other tool that I'm going to highlight here is the measure tool. It, the measure tool and the graphic tool that I'm going to show you are very similar in that it's going to draw a graphic and the way that they form, formulate it are similar as well. The only difference between these two tools is this one will actually measure it as you're doing it. So I'm going to use this line tool. As soon as I click on it, I can pick what style of line I want to use. <coughs> I can pick its opacity or transparency. I can add uh, the font color that it is, and then I can also pick what type of uh, units I want to measure in. So now that I have the tool the way I want it, I'm going to go ahead and start clicking. And as I move it, it will measure each segment. And then when I double click, it will give me the total measurement for that entire segment. I can clear that and do an area if I want to. And find out what that area is that I'm drawing. <coughs> I can go in here and hit clear. Say I wanted to highlight an area before I go to print it for a customer that I'm going to uh, present a map for. So I'm going to come down here to the graphics tool, move it out of the way. I'm going to use this free end tool. I'm going to pick a blue outline and I want it to be about 50% transparent. And I'm going to go ahead and just draw me a polygon. This is the area that I'm highlighting. And I want to add a little bit of text to that. So I'm going to go ahead and make that text red so it shows up real well. And I have to put this mic down so I can type. So, and then I can click that right on the map. If I get the tool again. And it puts text on there. So now I can go ahead and print that map. And I'm going to do a landscape. You can give it a title. And you can pick what format. In this case, we're going to do PDF. It takes a little bit to print it. But what it's going to print is it's going to print the map, any graphics that you have on there, and a little bit of a legend as well. Or you could just do the map only, and it will just do the map area. It takes a little bit for it to create this PDF. But once it's done, you can click on it and open it up. And it has a title, the title that you specified has the map, and then it has a little bit of a legend down below. So you could actually highlight a particular area to show them what it is that you want them to know about that particular property. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, now we'll del delve into the layers, a couple of the layers. On this map, we have one layer that's always turned on. It only shows up when you're zoomed in, and that's the parcel layer. Uh, this particular parcel layer. We actually have three different parcel layers uh, because my boss wanted to be able to see parcels when you're zoomed out. But when you're zoomed in with this layer, you can click on any parcel and it will pull up the property information for that particular par parcel. Let's see. What is going on? Let's see if maybe we can kickstart it here. Once you click on it, it actually gives you all the information about that particular property. And up at the top, it has a link to the county's website. So you click on that, and it will actually take you to the county's side. And you can find more information. You can find abstracts, such as the actual recorded deed that was recorded for that property and any other uh, information you want to have about that particular property. <coughs> So I'm going to zoom out. And you'll notice as I zoom out that the parcels turn off if I don't have this one turned on. But we have two other different property lines in there, property lines for aerial and property lines for base map. They're the same exact uh, layer. The only difference is one is yellow and one's white. So it just depends upon what you want. There's a couple of different ways that you can turn on aerials. The base map, which I don't recommend because it uses Esri's aerials. And they don't allow you to zoom in as far, and they're not as good a quality. So what I would recommend is scrolling down to the very bottom of this and turning on this imagery. It's imagery that we got from the state through a Google contract. 
six inch resolution, so it's really good quality, and it allows you to zoom in really tight. <coughs> the only problem is when you turn this on, it actually goes over the top of the road names and the addresses. So if you want to see road names and addresses, what you'll want to do is come up here to property for the addresses and turn those on and then you can see the addresses and come up here to transportation and turn on road names <coughs> and it will turn on those road names. As always, as you turn on the layers, you can ident <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> identify those layers. You'll notice that when I click on this, because I also have addresses on in addition to property, that up at the top of this dialog box, you have a thing that says one of two. That means it found two features where I clicked. In this case, addresses, so you can find in information about the address layer, and then owner information. If I come over here in development and turn on planning under planning and zoning and turn on final plats, I can also click on the plat information. You'll notice as if I zoom out just a little bit, you can see the boundaries a little bit of the particular plat. So if I want to see a recorded plat, the first thing it pulls up is the final plats. I can click up here at the top, and that gives me the recorded plat for that particular property. So I can see what the dimensions of that property are, <coughs> what the recorded document is. It's take, it takes a little bit for this to pull up. <coughs> And I might have picked on one that has a broken link. Usually happens that way, doesn't it, when you want it to work a certain way? It <coughs> Let's see. <coughs> it's thinking. I don't know, I'll have to look at those links, but anyway. The final plats, you click on it, and it should pull up the final plat for that particular property. I will look at that and make sure it's working, but you can see the recorded document. If you want, you can turn on zoning, general plan. The more layers you turn on, the more information you're going to be able to see. Like I said, there's about 80-something layers in here. So my recommendation, if you want to see what's in there, is just go through, start expanding the layers until you see the legend. As soon as you see the legend, then you've gone far enough. But we have stuff in here like highway exits, milepost markers, uh, transportation master plan. So if you want to see what the roads are going to be like uh, in the future or what we have planned, trail plans. Uh, I mean, there, there's just a ton of information in here. Uh, I've only touched on a brief portion of it. If you want to see what kind of accidents, uh, in the last 10 years, what roads have the most accidents? You could click on that and see accidents. So there's a wealth of information in here. Uh, I, my suggestion would just be go through and start expanding stuff and, and see what's out there. As you turn on a layer, also over here in the legend, if you click on that, it will show you what those symbols mean. And then if you happen to close down your layer dialog box and wondered where it went, just click right here in the layer list. We'll will uh, come up. Does anybody have any questions? I tried to go through that as quickly as possible so as to not take up as much of your time. But uh, I'm assuming this information only borders Spanish Fork. For the most part, yes. Uh, the parcels, we actually it, tend to get more because there are times that we actually need information outside of that. So the parcel information actually goes all the way up to Springville all the way down to Salem, Payson area, and then over into Mapleton. And then also back to West Mountain on the west side. Okay. So where do we start to get into this? Spanishfork.org. Okay. Yeah, if you go to right here. Spanishfork.org, right here in the middle of the map, or right here in the middle of the page, there's a mapping link that you can go to. Did we make this, did you guys make this in-house or subcontracted out? We subcontracted it out. Very impressive. What type of platform is it built in? JavaScript. Okay. Yep. We uh, contracted it out so we could get it faster. It's well done. That's so. a nice, nice program. Hopefully this will provide you guys the information that you need and, and want and can help you with your businesses and 
and getting information about our city, about residents, about whatever it may be. That's all I have, unless anybody had any other questions. There are other maps out there, but. <coughs> All right, any, uh, I, any questions for Sean before he shuts this down? Some of you may be thinking, you know, what's the benefit of this? But I know in a lot of the businesses, real estate is an insurance agent. We use this type of stuff all the time. So it's very, very helpful. And it's just nice to have a community that provides this type of, you know, service to us. We don't have time to go through and let everybody introduce themselves. Um, we just don't, we have a very large group, which is great. But we did want to recognize a couple of Platinums. I'm going to let Clark do that. Um, uh, we just recently had a few businesses join the chamber at the platinum level and so I'm going to let Clark go through the list. And I apologize and I, I don't know if uh, Lent's had an opportunity. There's a reason uh, Matt Harrison isn't here today. Matt and I both lost an uncle about two hours ago. Uh, but it uh, was a blessing. Uh, so we'll leave it at that. Uh, but I did want to introduce uh, Jake, if you'll stand up. And if you actually could tell us about your business and uh, what you guys do, it would be great. Yeah, so uh, I'm uh, one office of a lot worldwide about there. We have XPO Logistics has uh, 852 offices in 52 countries. Um, I am a uh, a franchise owner of XPO Logistics, so and I'm only one of 15 out of those 852 offices. Uh, I control the Utah and Idaho territories uh, for XPO. Um, we do all types of shipping, uh, anything from LTL, full truck load, container, ocean freight, international air cargo. Uh, we have warehousing, trading services. Uh, we manage freight all over the world. Um, I do a lot of work with uh, uh, relief organizations, humanitarian organizations, uh, getting medical supplies, pharmaceuticals. Uh, that's kind of uh, my bigger niche in this business. Um, we move freight to some of the hardest hit areas of the world. Um, right now we've got projects. Uh, going on in Turkey, obviously, because we can't ship anything to Syria, so we're moving it all into Mersin, Turkey, and it's going over the border into Syria, and we're trying to get aid into Syria right now. Right now, we're working on about 18 containers going into Turkey, but we move uh, freight into uh, a lot of third world countries, uh, Africa, Nepal. When there's a natural disaster, um, I'm called on a lot to uh, help get that, uh, that cargo there, but we handle all types of freight, um, you name it, uh, from your smallest 200 pound shipments to, you know, 100 ton pieces of machinery. So that's a little bit about XPO. And, and just as an example of what uh, the chamber does, uh, Jake is an old elementary school buddy of Todd Dickerson's. Isn't that right, Todd? That's how it works. And um, <laughs> the day that we did Zach's uh, ribbon cutting at Optimized Health, uh, Jake saw Todd, uh, and I went the next day, and Todd said, or Jake said, what's the best way I can help you? And uh, that, that's how networking can work uh, among all of us. And the other way it can work and I'll just give a shout out uh, to our first uh, Diamond members, which uh, is Maple Creek. And uh, Maple Creek, uh, the way that worked is Maple Creek was, uh, I, we talked to Melissa and they became a, a Diamond and uh, that they've been able to uh, help my uncle uh, for the last several months. So, uh, you know, it, uh, it worked. We, it works out, we, it's like Lance, I, and I, I won't forget Lance's uh, talk at the banquet. It's like Lance said, we, we're a family. I mean, uh, uh, we're, we're a family. Um, is there anybody, uh, I, I, like I say, I've had a scattered morning. Uh, we've got, I do know, Ron, do you wanna tell us about your event, uh, just really quick, uh, the, the health? Okay, I'm producing the, the uh, 
Almond Health Expo. I have brochures, anybody interested? Uh, had a banner day today, we sold seven booths. Yeah, it's filling up really well, so if you want to get in, now's a good time. There is a $50 discount for chamber members. So uh, drop by and pick up a handout from me. If you'd love to have you join. Probably uh, the history there is uh, Ron and Karen have got probably what was the first expo that uh, was ever put together uh, in Utah Valley. Uh, in the well, sense of boots and different things. Well, but yours is the one that kind of put things on the map. Well, take credit. Anyway, work the dates are <laughs> April 15th and 16th. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, before we finish and do our raffle, can we have all of our platinum members? That if your business is a platinum member, will you stand so we can recognize you? All right. Thank you very much. We're very grateful to all of you Platinum members. You guys uh, contribute on a level that allows us to do things we otherwise would not be able to, and we are very grateful to you. Yes. So thank you. <laughs> so, and then, uh, Brad, did you, did you have something that you wanted to talk about as far as the golf tournament? Yeah. I just want to take a moment and uh, at least let each of you know uh, the, the sponsorship and the, the event is going along really well. We have approximately nine more corporate well, equivalent, so four, some, nine more foursomes um, available at this point. So if you're not a golfer, we do have sponsorships available that are either um, whole sponsors or just cash donor sponsors that yeah. can go towards the scholarship um, funds and, and everything. We're trying to get as many of these scholarships into the deserving hands of high school gradu graduating seniors. So any support um, is appreciated. I can leave um, the, the letter of intent out front or, or uh, approach me and I can give you a letter of intent, let you see what we have available. And, and so, and if you don't know Brad, this is Brad Lang with America First Credit Union, and he has taken over a lot of the responsibility for the, the Rotary <coughs> Chamber Golf Tournament, and he's done a great job, and we, we're very appreciative, Brad, so thanks. Okay, thanks, guys. Have a great afternoon.